I'm, hi, I'm John. Uh, I'm the CEO of Pact. Uh, you'll see our logo on the CDN banners there. Uh, we're not a broadcaster. We represent the independent production community, which accounts for probably over 50% of all the programs that you enjoy, hate, engage with, and from uh, this morning's sessions, quite rightly criticize. Um, <coughs> so what we're going to do is we're going to have a little chat. We're sort of the two Ronnies of the CDN. Uh, I'm going to talk a little bit about why, where Diamond came from, a sense where CDN came from, uh, and sort of where we're going and some of the issues around data. And, and I think this morning's contributions, particularly from our colleagues from the Writers Guild, have been really helpful about us trying to see how all that develops and how it moves forward. So uh, I think you're going to ask me yeah, the first question. Yeah, I'm going to ask you the first question. Um, so, John, you were, you've were you been involved with Diamond from the very beginning, um, so you probably know exactly you know how far we've come on our journey do you want to just say a bit more about that and how far we have come yeah well i think the reason why diamond came about uh, i think gary eloquently put it this morning in the opening session is where we used to be in broadcasting is uh, diversity data was being collected by all the broadcasters and had been for a very long time the only problem was it was all collected in entirely different ways for different characteristics and different purposes, which led to uh, Gary's point is that we used to have a pissing contest every year between the broadcasters about who was more diverse than the other one. But of course, none of us could understand whether that was true or not. Uh, it was all marketing, with good reason. They are competitors, very strong competitors. Uh, and then for my members, who were the producers making the shows who had to fill, fill in five different forms, for, with five different uh, questions and set of criteria, we couldn't understand what we were doing and whether it made any difference. And also, if there were targets in place, that might be different for one broadcaster compared to another broadcaster. So the whole thing got in a real mess. Um, I think, to me, that was really kicked off uh, at the Edinburgh TV Festival in, I think, 2013, 2014, when a major broadcaster having just agreed at the CDN, we'd all be working collectively, then announced that they would no longer do that. Uh, and that led to a bit of a crisis across the industry, which led to, quite rightly, a big debate uh, about how do we sort this out? And how do we actually, because of the legitimate concerns from the various communities represented here and elsewhere, uh, that we weren't actually rising to the challenge. And even when we did rise to the challenge, the data we were giving people was pretty much useless. So people had to go off and do their own, and we weren't accountable, and we weren't transparent. So that was the real driver, uh, ably led by uh, Channel 4 at the beginning of that. And then <coughs> ITV, who were the chair at the time, then agreed collectively that we would move the CDN from basically being an invite-only boys club to actually being a proper funded organization with a responsibility to get Diamond off the blocks, uh, actually build it, get everyone to pay for it, uh, and actually get up and running and develop uh, into a system which would lead to today's type event. Okay, thank you. Um, and so Diamond only works if people fill out a diversity form. And the sector, as we know, has uh, got a lot of freelancers in it. Um, Gary talked about the fact that we want to raise response rates, so the number of people who are filling in a form. Um, what do you think the additional challenges are, given that it is a very freelance heavy sector, and what can we do better to try and reach those freelancers? Well, I, mean, I, th I think one of the key things is the point that Gary raised, which is the anonymity, that when we get data, it is absolutely nuclear bunker protected. So you should have no worries about that data ever appearing anywhere that isn't legitimate. And there's very strong protocols, both within the broadcasters and within Diamond to make sure that if you give your data, there's no way to track it back. That sort of leads into program level issues. And I think those are uh, uh, concerns to try and navigate going forward. But I think another thing, and I, I was chatting to someone earlier this morning when we got here, who was saying, well, and I was asking about this question, and they said, well, the problem is when we phone up agents, uh, they have middle class white writers who are worried that if they, f uh, th they fill in uh, Diamond, they'll somehow be discriminated against being middle-class white male writers. Um, well, that's nothing to worry about. The data won't enable that to ever get back to a commissioner that you're a middle-class white male writer. 
fact you're a middle class white male writer may raise other issues around uh, what we're doing in the industry, but your data is absolutely secure. And I, I do find it strange where uh, organizations and others who basically want to see the data becoming more comprehensive, giving us more of, uh, issues to uh, analyze it, to get to granularity, so we can know exactly what's happening across all the roles, all the creative roles, commissioning roles, that they somehow say, don't fill in the diamond form. Actually, the more you fill in the form, the more you get the answers. So it's sort of self-defeating to me not to do that. I understand people's concerns about confidentiality and data, but I think those have been addressed. Um, bear in mind, all the broadcasters are major corporations, either publicly owned, publicly funded, have PLCs. The jeopardy for these things going wrong is so high that it's unthinkable. So everyone takes it very seriously. And the amount of lawyers that we have in Diamond working groups to make sure that it's utterly compliant with the GDPR and all the other protocols makes me lose sleep at night. I mean, Diamond costs millions in cash, but millions more in people's time to actually get it developed. It's the world's first. And if we had a blueprint and best practice, we would have copied it. We're having to make it up and develop it as we go. I think it's your turn to ask oh, me a question. Turn. Great, oh good. <laughs> <laughs> well, leading into that about privacy and security, <coughs> um, the point about Cambridge Analytics, GDPR, and there's a strong focus, rightly, because we all worry about our data in a digital world. Personally, I'm quite relaxed if I get the holiday uh, promoted to me that I want, but other times I'm maybe not. So, so what, what <coughs> how does that work? How, what's your day-to-day -day experience and how do we manage that? I think it's kind of been led from the very beginning. The initial design for Diamond was about ensuring that data is kept very securely, that people's identity or privacy are maintained. Um, and I, you know, we've all just, the ink's just dried on everyone's diversity strategy and now everybody needs a data strategy. And I guess it's about trying to get that balance right, isn't it, about um, collecting the data and keeping that secure. And you've got to remember that Diamond's collecting very, very sensitive data. Um, but then ensuring that we can access and use the data in a way that will enable us to progress. And that's why aggregating the data across broadcasters is so important because it enables us to get those higher samples and enables to look at a more granular level but across a broader data sample. Yeah, I, I, into that, I mean, we want to be absolutely secure uh, on anonymity, but we also want to be transparent. Mm. So a lot of quite rightly the questions as the data is built up we couldn't be granular but we're going to move uh, into reporting on roles how's that going to work for the next report how do you see that working I think um, definitely the ambition is to report on roles in the next report and um, across broadcasters um, it is obviously determinant on the sample sizes so where we have a role type with a with a good sample then of course we will provide that data CDN is committed to um, publishing all the data that we possibly can. Um, I think as well, transparency, it's also about being clearer about what Diamond is. Diamond is quite a complex system, and I think we could do more at CDN to try and explain to people exactly how it works and how the, how the data comes about, and I think that would be helpful. And also think about how we provide that data. So at the moment, we've got some tables in the back of the second cut report, but maybe think about how we can make that data more accessible, perhaps in a machine readable format so that people can access it and do their own analysis much more easily. To me. And finally, yeah. I think it's but, an uh, But on that last finally. point, I think that's really important for transparency. I think the more we can get data out there so other people can use it, uh, rather than just sitting on a bit of paper. <laughs> Um, which isn't usable, I think, I think that's really important as well. So other people can interrogate, challenge, and use it in for their ends as well. I think that's important. Definitely, and a, a, just a, a diamond you know, is a data set, but there's a lot of other data being collected in the industry and outside of the industry. And it's about putting all that data together to get a bigger picture. One data set in and of itself is not gonna give you all the answers. You do need to work with others who are also collecting data. Um, so where do you think that Diamond will be able to take us then? Um, what can the data tell us and um, what do you think actually this Diamond data will help us to change in the industry? Uh, well, briefly, because Deborah's w waving at me, which is always a nice or bad thing, depending on what which she's in. Um, <coughs> uh, oh, 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 not the stick. Um, <coughs> uh, well, I, th I think Marva for me summed it up this morning, which is, 
this is a non-stop. This will go on forever. And Diamond's an ongoing dynamic data set that collects forever. Um, but I think the other thing she touched on, which is really important, the business case is well rehearsed, and I think we all know that. But the, the thing for executives is, if you're making investments, in the past, there were lots of diversity initiatives, projects, and we were sort of projected out uh, for many years, but no one knew whether they really made a difference. So there was lots of money being spent. Did it make a difference for anyone? With Diamond, uh, we can actually tell if you change commissioning strategy, if you bring in more deaf writers, actors, women <coughs> writers, did it make a difference? Did it affect the performance overall of the industry? And we can actually objectively measure that now and report on it. And I think that for senior executives, as Marva said, numbers matter. And those numbers will show if you spend more money on drama for this area of representation and it performed better, Diamond can tell you that, as well as all their own uh, audience research. And that's really, really important for long-term change. I agree. Can I just add one thing to that? Um, yeah, I mean, this, it's the idea of the long-term monitoring, isn't it? Because I think it's easy to, um, you know, have an initiative, get a kind of blip in the data. It looks like something's happened, and then that impact may die away. So the idea of diamond and the long-term monitoring is that you will be able to constantly see whether that initiative you had or the strategy has 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 a sustainable and long-term impact. Thank you very much, everyone. Thank you.